Lego Bionicle Heroes. You merely need to glance at forums, reviews and other places online to see people gushing about how good a game this was when they were growing up. Had such a great game existed, but I merely overlooked it because playing with toys is for children and man babies? Hopefully, we shall find out. I picked up my copy for around £3 two years ago, and since then it has sat in the backlog, waiting to be played. The disc itself was fairly scratched, so I will be installing it to an external hard drive and playing it on my modded Xbox 360. Had it not been for Pillage the Pile, it's possible it would never have been given a spin, but thankfully I now have a reason to play the games in my backlog one by one. Bionicle Heroes Are you a solid structure? Or will we be dismantling you brick by brick? Immediate impressions are poor. My choice of languages, English or dank 420 blaze it. After a series of flat, still images for developer and publisher logos, I'm presented with a bland looking title screen. Upon starting the game, I'm presented with animated developer and publisher logos. I already know who made this game. I don't understand why I now have to see these names again. Presented in that dopey, childish Lego game humor that makes you want to send John Burton to the Shadow Realm where he belongs. After these logos, an SMV sequence. What's an SMV? It's a slow motion video, obviously. This 3 frames per second FMV is completely unintelligible, both from a visual and audio standpoint. It's like watching a fight scene from the Michael Bay Transformers movies, in the sense that you don't know where one robot ends and the other one begins. From what I can gather, the peaceful creatures of the island turned evil, so put on the mask and purify them. I'm dropped into the hub world and I can barely see what I'm supposed to be looking at. I thought at first that there was something wrong with the brightness settings, but no, there is no brightness or gamma slider. The game is meant to look like this. Motion blur on anything besides zero makes the game look like someone smeared Vaseline all over the screen with a soiled nappy, and the depth of field option appears to do nothing. The game is claustrophobic with your character taking up this much of the screen real estate. You could really use an FOV slider. I don't think it looks too bad in the 4-3 screenshots. It's pretty clear widescreen in this game is more of a fleeting last minute fix. And actually knowing what we do about the game's development, it started life as a first person shooter. It's likely they stuck a 3D model on screen, kept the same claustrophobic FOV, and called it a day. A little bit of well-funneled game design leads me to my first level. It's the only open door, Vezek's coastline, and within that one portal, leading to Piraka Bluff. These words mean nothing to me. Uh, are we sure I didn't set the language to Dansk by mistake? A cutscene shows Warhead from Vectman feeding a robot the dick creature from Urotsuki Doji, making it come to life in a spectacularly theatrical fashion. And then gameplay. And this was a real effort to acclimate myself to. The controls, like rigid tank controls. The first shiny thing I see tells me I need a brown Toa Hyuki, which might as well be anything. With no knowledge of the Bionicle IP, I struggled to understand. A construction sounds like something a lady does when she goes into labor, not something a brown Toa Hyuki does whatever a brown Toa Hyuki is. The first stage, without mincing my words here, a little bit confusing? I learn quickly that holding the A button makes me fire my weapon, and then I walk into a mask and my attack style changes. Just like that, I'm confused again. It's a learning experience, like being asked to perform open heart surgery on your first day as the hospital janitor. Overwhelmed by the apparent complexity, I did what any player does. I destroyed everything the game would let me destroy. If anything else, I could at least collect the money that explodes out of things. I soon learn the big yellow mask, not actually brown, allows me to interact with things or construct them. 
so like building in other LEGO games, but only that particular mask can do it. I learned that each mask has a projectile type, and quickly you could say I LEGO piece things together. The handy mini-map shows the enemy locations and mask locations. The game is starting to make sense. Yes, I can understand this. Well, that's what I thought, but I came across something I couldn't activate despite having the right mask. There's upgrades I don't have yet. Then I activated Hero Mode, and <laughs> I had no idea what that meant, but I now appeared to be invincible while epic music played. I put two and two together very quickly. If I'm gold, then I can build the gold thing I saw on the beach. And I finally understood. Get Hero Mode, build a gold construction, lose my gold powers, gain them again. Crushing the fauna to death is amusing. Wonderfully sadistic for a game rated 7+. I wasn't exactly hooked on the game yet, but I could feel it digging its hooks into me. I was excited to see what other masks I could collect, what sort of upgrades were available, an on-rail segment made for a sweet change of pace, and then the next area, another gold construction. And I already had the needed hero mode powers. Yes, I get it, I understand it, the game is exactly what I would have wanted as a child. Lasers, explosions, robots, and crushing little bugs to death with my superpowers. Little quality of life things I noticed, looking at an obstacle and pressing the change mask button automatically switches to the one you need. Handy. Sure, a lot of what I'm looking at makes no sense to me, but in a way that's refreshing. As ugly and washed out as the game is, the uniquely attractive plastic toy robots in realistic environments makes for a satisfying combination. The first level is long, it forces you to get to grips with the game's controls and mechanics. The rinse, repeat of kill all, build all, then destroy the things you built, collect more money. Intensely compelling. An area with lava, and then a cave. And at the end of the cave, the first boss. I learn quickly, these bosses are pattern based. When their shield drops, a single hit will deal damage and their shield recharges. The first boss proved difficult, as it turns out. There's a lock on strafe at the time that I didn't know about. I assure you, later bosses go down much easier after I learned about the strafe. My second-hand copy of Bionicle Heroes doesn't have a manual, so I had to learn everything by doing. The game's basic assisted aiming is decent, but once you learn about the lock-on strafe, it's just a masterful craft. Upon beating the boss, we collect its mask, and are returned to the hub world, an achievement unlocked for completing the stage. At this point, I hung up the game, considered it to be neat, but not compelling enough to play. But later on in the day, I returned to it. I had an unexpected urge to continue playing, so I did. After all, I needed that 50% discount, which would make powering up my Bionicles much cheaper. So a few hours later, I was back with the controller in my hand. Fox Mountain was now accessible, and within it, the flooded lowlands. Another childish cutscene. This villain does not come across as particularly dangerous. If they're the best of the best, then I have zero concerns. The gameplay is as it was before. Destroy all enemies, collect the money. Playing the game puts you in a meditative trance almost. The stage, not a problem. The boss, uniquely challenging. I was defeated a few times, losing my masks. I would need to get better, get stronger. Another boss down, there really isn't much to say. You already see how the game is structured. More achievements for my hard work. The 50% discount was purchased. At first I thought it was like the red bricks in LEGO Star Wars, looking for the option to turn it on. No, it's always active after it's purchased. I discover areas within the hub world, secrets on top of secrets. Decrepit dungeons next. The same formula repeats. Childish cutscene, followed by the same oddly unput downable shoot kill build gameplay. Yes, unputdownable is a word, and is permissible in Scrabble. Each level, you start with three masks. Part of the initial satisfaction is finding the masks required to fill out your arsenal, each one with abilities and weapons of their own. Like collecting the toys, you collect the masks. Each one opens a new realm of imaginative possibilities. I should really work as a toy salesman. Fun fact, for three and a half years, I was a toy salesman. Secrets upon secrets. It's a run and gun, yes, with linear A to B stages, but little nooks and crannies dotted about, each one with more money to collect, or perhaps even a silver or gold canister. 
Not really sure what they do. I'm not in this for the 100%. More so just to say I've played the game enough to feel satisfied, satiated. I might as well try to see its minimal story through to the end. The next boss battle, challenging. Though eventually I learned his pattern and making use of the lock on strife, it becomes almost menial. Another stage completed, more achievements unlocked, and most importantly, 103,000 to spend on upgrades. I fully max out Jala's attack and special skill. Now I see the plus symbol next to the mask, and it makes sense. Fully upgrade the masks and unlock the hidden areas that were previously inaccessible. Returning to Thox Mountain, I realized that the boss masks can now be used to open the next level of each area, in this case, allowing me access to Mountain Path. Each stage is now an automatic process. They take roughly 20 minutes to complete, likely less time if you don't search for all the hidden items you can get on your first pass. This stage ends not with a boss battle, but a short enemy rush, where you must achieve hero mode to build the next construction. More achievements. More unlocks. More upgrades. I see why so many people look back fondly on this game from their childhood. At the time, critics blasted this console version of the game for being too repetitive or simplistic. Yeah, the game is repetitive. But if what is being repeated is fun, isn't that a good thing? I bet those same critics likely play Raid Shallow Bellends or some other mobile garbage on their smartphones these days. Which brings us to this video sponsor, Raid Shadow. No. I managed to get stuck in the stage Blizzard Peaks. Reluctantly, after trying everything I could think of, I backed out of the level. Was it a glitch? Did something I need not spawn? Well, actually, the trigger for the next section was incredibly specific, but I didn't know that at the time. So, I had to come up with answers of my own. Without the title updates, it could have been some kind of anti-piracy. <laughs> Knowing John Burton and the kind of things he sneaks into his games, there's probably a Bible verse buried in version 1.0 of the game somewhere, maybe etched onto the surface of a rock. Ah oh yes, there it is, Smuggler's Cove. Don't expect a great deal of commentary from here on. What can be said that hasn't already been said? Playing stages, collecting money, grabbing upgrades, rinse, repeat, ad nauseum. If the game stops being fun, I'll stop, I said to myself, but it stopped being fun. And I kept going. What was going to be some throwaway gameplay and commentary turned into a desire to see the game through. I could have just stopped, said the gameplay was too moorish or too repetitive and moved on lazily scrabbling together an episode, but no, I was determined to reach something resembling an ending, so I continued to play, and just ended up punishing myself, breezing through levels as though they were child's play. Well, to be fair, they kind of are, considering this game is made for kids. Bosches are vanquished, soon my entire team is fully upgraded. You know what? Those critics might have had a point. A wee little point. 41% through the game and I'm starting to get tired of its rigmarole. My characters are all maxed out, and now it's kind of mundane. Where I was once excited to play on, I now see the bigger picture. I completed three worlds of four levels. What's next? Well, three worlds of four levels. Volcano, desert, jungle, might as well be video game world archetypes 101. I don't need to see this game through. As fun as it is, I think about what it could have been. The FPS of which the world was robbed, and I sulk. There's nothing wrong with this game, at all. IGN's Mark Bozon called this game one heck of a licensed game, and while I do agree, I stopped giving a heck around the time I beat my third area boss, and exactly the same cutscenes were reused. If it hadn't been for Pillage the Pile, I wouldn't have taken Lego Bionicle Heroes off the shelf, and I would not have explored it. The game would have merely sat there unplayed. But what is the point in collecting games if you're not going to play them? I'm going to give Lego Bionicle Heroes an arbitrary enjoyment score. Out of 100, I give the game a 63. The game itself starts out confusing, finds its footing, blows its wad early and then offers little in the way of genuine challenge once you're all powered up. Combined with my lack of knowledge of the source material, 
There is little reason to keep playing. As decent as the game is, I'm certain I've seen everything that it has to show. Add to that the childish, pandering cutscenes. I was under the impression that Bionicle was for older children and didn't talk down to them. The same cannot be said for this game. Join me again next time as we explore the backlog again together on the next Pillage the Pile.